Hey all, it's Taylor, and this is the RTX 3080 Ti. This was one of the last third gen cards that Nvidia released, and it is one of the last cards EVGA ever released. This is an EVGA branded 3080 Ti, and it came with a whopping 12 gigs of GDDR6X memory. This was a total beast when it came out a few years ago. How does it hold up in 2025? That is what I'm going to check out today. I'm gonna to test this guy against 1440p and then 4K, and I'm also going to switch from a 7900X CPU to a 9800X3D to see if there is any performance we can squeeze out of this GPU with that new chip. I'm going to cover how much you can find this card on the used market. It is about half price of what this card was retail, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. So let's go ahead and get into it. This video is not sponsored. However, I am gonna talk about NordVPN because I am an affiliate of NordVPN. I bought the software myself, it was not provided. If you wanna see links in the description, I will have them, so go ahead and click those. If you're interested in NordVPN, I will be talking about it at some point in the video. The case I'm using is a mini ITX case. It is the NR200P Max from Cooler Master. And inside I have the 3080 Ti, which has 12 gigs of GDDR6X RAM. Behind the graphics card is two sticks, 32 gigs of G-Skill 6000 mega transfers per second RAM at CL30. And then next to that is the AMD 7900X with 12 cores, 24 thread CPU. At the top, I have an all-in-one cooler that came with the case. This is two 140 millimeter fans at the top. And at the bottom of the case, I have two 90 millimeter fans from Noctua that are sucking in air from the bottom and pushing it through the system. The motherboard is the Gigabyte Aorus B650i Ultra. It is a mini ITX motherboard and I do like it quite a bit. All this together provides for a compact and dense space for the 3080 Ti to run. So let's see how it performs. I'm going to start my testing of the 3080 Ti here in Doom the Dark Ages. And jumping into settings, I have it set to 2560 by 1440. I have the DLSS set to quality and all the settings are set to ultra. And with that, just right into the first mission here, getting 88, 85 frames per second with a frame time of around 11 milliseconds, which is actually kind of high. And it looks like we are utilizing all of the GPU there. So that's good, it's up to 99%. Now I'm in at Counter-Strike 2 and here it's maxing out at 399 frames per second. Unfortunately, I can't show the overlay because Steam is weird and it doesn't allow overlays with our games, but it's not dropping below 399 frames per second. So uh, the, the 3080 Ti in 1440p is just absolutely wrecking Counter-Strike 2. All right, next is the Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, and I am at 2560 by 1440 with the DLSS set to quality and frame generation off, dynamic resolution scaling off, VSync off, and I'm gonna go with those settings. And looking further at the graphic settings in game, all the graphic settings are set to high. Here are the settings here. And the last of us two does support my overlay so we can see exactly what kind of frames per second we're getting and all of the stats. And it looks like here in the area of Seattle, which is a big area, it has to render a lot of frames, getting 123 frames per second at 2560 by 1440. And our 3080 Ti is pulling massive amounts of power at 330 watts, but we are utilizing the full GPU. So it doesn't look like there's any kind of CPU up bottleneck there. It is rendering at 99% and getting 73 degrees Celsius, whereas the 7900X is reaching a whopping 90 degrees Celsius. So the CPU is burning up, but the GPU is good. Now I'm in Cyberpunk 2077 and my video settings are set to 2560 by 1440 like they have been before. And for graphics, I went ahead and set it to ultra and then kind of changed it here. That's why it says custom to DLSS and quality. Everything else is ultra except for motion blur because nobody wants that. But everything is, a, is the ultra setting, which is a combination of high and ultra. Ray tracing is off completely 
and the 3080 Ti is noticeably louder because Cyberpunk is really making this thing work. I mean, we're at 400 watts now coming from the 3080 Ti, which is the most we've seen yet. Still utilizing about 99% of the GPU. It's dipping down a little bit, so we might be CPU bottlenecking a bit with that 7900X, getting 107 frames per second, 110 frames per second. That's pretty good. Um, considering we're at DLSS quality, so those settings could be knocked down a bit more to get more FPS. And our frame time is pretty good too, at between five and nine milliseconds. That is pretty fast. So Cyberpunk is working really well at 2560 by 1440. Now with the 7900X that we have in here, this is an awesome CPU, but it may or may not have been a CPU bottleneck because it is not a gaming CPU which is why I want to remove all doubt of that and replace it with blueberry scones because my goodness, these things are delicious. I wish I could replace the CPU with blueberry scones. That would be amazing, but no, not today. I'm replacing it with a 9900X3D. This is the fastest gaming CPU on the planet as of this video, and I will be replacing this 7900X with this. So there is no doubt that there is a CPU bottleneck with the 3080Ti in this tiny case. Let's go ahead and get this replaced. Here's those results in 1440p in Doom. It went from 115 watts to 70 watts, 82 degrees Celsius down to 76 degrees Celsius and no change in frames per second. For Counter-Strike, the frames per second stayed the exact same. For The Last of Us Part Two, there was a reduction in wattage from 140 to 107, 92 degrees Celsius to 90 and 20 frames per second gain. And in Cyberpunk 129 watts to 93 watts, 88 degrees Celsius to 86 in one frames per second gain. But 1440p is fun and all, but let's get serious. Let's see what this 3080 Ti can do. Y'all, it is so important to use protection. That is why I choose NordVPN for securing my home and network, especially when I'm in public. NordVPN encrypts your network traffic so that you are protected and you should be connecting to a VPN when you are using a network that you do not trust. NordVPN has servers all over the globe, including several countries, as well as several servers here in the US, which is where I'm from. I am in Texas and when I connect to this server in Seattle and run a speed test, I do not drop all that much speed. I have a one gig internet connection in here. You can see that connecting all the way to Seattle, I'm still getting pretty decent speeds. NordVPN has a ton of flexible pricing plans and you can secure up to 10 devices with one account. And that is phones, tablets, PCs, Macs, you name it, you can secure it. And you can also choose to remember your trusted Wi-Fi network so that the VPN will automatically shut off when you're on a trusted network and you don't even have to do anything. If you are interested in NordVPN, be sure to check out my affiliate link in the description below. It's time for 4K and we're starting off in Doom, the Dark Ages. Frames per second is gone again, but up in the corner you can see hopefully that getting 62 frames per second. So have taken a bit of a hit there. We're getting about 90 frames per second. Now it is at 60. How is the GPU running? Still full utilization at 99%, pulling 390 watts. So that is considerably more than we are seeing on 1440p. GPU is working harder at 4K, makes sense. Counter-Strike 2, here we are at 3840 by 2160, so 4K. And if the colors look better, I don't know why that is, uh, but on the other monitor, the colors were a little washed out in my recording. Now they look normal and getting 273 frames per second. Oh wow, the Steam overlay actually displays the correct frames per second. The Last of Us Part Two in 4K, literally everything else is the same. DLSS quality, getting 114 frames per second. That is actually pretty good. And the frame time has increased a bit at nine milliseconds. So it is running a little bit slower compared to the frame time. 
And the CPU is still cooking at 90 degrees. The Last of Us Part 2 does not like CPUs apparently. Um, but we're getting full utilization on the GPU at 100%, so that's good. CPU 63%, pulling 90 watts on the CPU and 390 on the GPU. So 4K is going to suck a lot more power out of your system, but it's still staying pretty cool under 80 degrees. Last but not least, Cyberpunk in 4K, everything else is the same, getting 58 frames per second. So right at the 60 frames per second mark, which is good. I mean, DLSS quality, 4K, Cyberpunk on a 3080 Ti getting 60 frames per second. That's pretty good. This card is two generations old. Granted, it was one of the NVIDIA flagships at the time. This is pretty good performance here. 100% of the GPU, 37% of the CPU. And you can see that it is really taxing the GPU more than it is the CPU. At, we're at 400 watts, which I think is the maximum wattage that this GPU outputs. That is the most wattage we've seen in any game so far during this testing. And it's staying relatively cool still, 81 degrees Celsius. So that is a testament to EVGA's excellent cooling on the 3080 Ti, staying cool. And it is right at 60 frames per second. You can find this card for around $600 on the used market, given that this card was about $1,200 when it came out a few years ago, it has dropped about half the price in value. And for that performance, that seems like a pretty good deal, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you want to see more build videos, go ahead and check out this video, or if you want to see my video on the RTX 4060, be sure to check that out too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.